What's up, beautiful people? It's your homegirl, Miss Shameless, all up in your building, and I have missed you so much. If you're new here, welcome. If you have been here for a minute, I'm so sorry. Man, I've been in it, through it. Motherhood is no joke, but that is an excuse at this point. Uh, I have come to realize that I have been missing in action because I'm starting life all over again. It's been very scary. I've been in my head a lot. I've been thinking, analyzing. For me, when I made my intentions of 2023, 2023, I'm ready to embrace consistently working on my new brand, creating videos and photos and celebrating stories of mothers. I wanna be more intentional here on this channel, first of all. Um, but if you have missed me, you can watch me with my husband on our channel over there. Really just getting over this hurdle of fear of doing life all over again at 40. At 40, okay? So a little backstory. You guys, when I started YouTube, I was 30. I was also in the darkest chapter of my life, which was going through a divorce. That chapter ended, and while I was going through the divorce, I was starting my YouTube channel. And I was just pouring everything I had into this space that at the time was new, like fairly new. Like nobody knew what it was, we just knew that we were having fun, we were creating. We were doing transformation videos, hair tutorials, makeup, all OTDs, whatever happened to those. It was so much fun and this platform allowed me to kind of escape the drama, the, the heartache of my divorce and pour into something that allowed me to be creative, that allowed me to get myself out of my circumstances, which was, you know, living in the hood in New York, and I was able to go to Los Angeles. I'm not from New York, I'm Canadian, born and raised, moved to New York, spent X amount of years there, moved to Los Angeles. And in LA, it was a lot of fun, just, it was fun climbing this social ladder of like, you know, C and B C, red carpets, events. <laughs> the Grammys, front row, like, it was so awesome. Being a photographer to Prince, like, I have had such an amazing, amazing life. If something were to happen to me, God forbid, I can say I got the most life out of that trick. <laughs> like, the amount of lives, I, I have friends who've known me, obviously, outside of social media, and they're like, Maya, you've had, like, eight or nine lives. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, and it feels that way. So social media is something that started in my 30s, which means I had my whole teenage 20s to like live life. So I knew what life was like before social media. And maybe that's part of also why I was stepping away from it because I just wanted to do life for me and my circumstances in particular, having a home birth, becoming a mom, being a new immigrant in Sweden, on the countryside, learning a new language, and then also going through home renovations because our home was so tiny and <laughs> everything, the most. That was extreme, and I'm used to extreme circumstances based on the choices that I've made. Because for me, life is about living. Happiness is part of it, but it's not the all of it. For me, it's really like, I wanna live. I have this, heartbreak, but because of this heartbreak, because of this divorce, I can now embrace my marriage with like appreciation. Like I'm so blessed to have this man who is so emotionally intelligent, who has a family that is so present. Like the relationship Max has with his father is something I could never have even prayed for, okay? Like those two, they, they make me wanna bawl my eyes out. And the love that Saga's grandfather, grandmother that she has in Sweden is so beautiful. I could never see this beauty had I not gone through all of that. And so I realized that the choices that I've made in my life have been for living with all the pain and all the gains, with all the hurt and all the heart, like it's been so beautiful. 10 years later, I'm definitely in a new chapter. 
but it's also being born out of this heartache and pain. Like, you know if you've been raised by an immigrant mom, the struggles and challenges that come with that. So that's essentially who I've become. <laughs> and I wished, I mean, I had a lot of angels, don't get me wrong. I had a lot of angels come to me, but really and truly like the digital community, like the, uh, the lactation support that I had uh, from Lydia O'Boyd. And just like, I just wish, like, I just never had enough support. I felt like I just never had enough support. And I have been talking to other new mothers and one mom actually surprised me. She had her, her own mother and her mother-in-law that was there with her for like a couple weeks. And she also expressed that she just felt like it wasn't enough because of where she was physically, mentally, and spiritually. It's just like this, I can't speak for all women because, but based on my experience and maybe some others here and there, I think it, if you're really an immigrant, <laughs> whether you're like a Canadian in the US, an American abroad, like this really hits hard when you're an immigrant. So essentially, I not only reached out and like sought help, I sought out information and knowledge to better equip myself. I've been doing that if you watch my videos on preparing for a home birth. Now that I'm in the after stage, I've had amazing opportunities to learn not only from books, but from women. In this whole process of motherhood, I became that which I needed, which is a doula. I became a postpartum certified doula. Uh -huh. oh, yes, and I absolutely love it. I love learning. I love, I love listening. I love listening to your stories. And I've been actually uh, having a few slots open. I have a Calendly invite where um, you can like set a time with me and I can be there to listen or I can be there to provide help. And I've learned to become good at what to say and what not to say. And so Max and I and my, my daughter, we were in Guatemala and we were there because we were working with a, a, a local clinic called Casa Materna and they provide support for local indigenous Mayan women. And what they are doing is so, it's so powerful, so beautiful. I'm so grateful that I reached out to the director there and she responded to my email because I reached out to a lot of um, clinics, birthing centers, and she was like the, not only did she respond, she was on top of it. And I was like, are you American? And she's like, no, but I went to school in the US. I'm like, noted. Because Americans, let me tell you, Y'all are, <laughs> when you want ish done, you get it done. So thank you, Gabriella. And I'll share some of her story here. But she put me in touch with the woman at the clinic. Max and I were able to film them, interview them. We're gonna help with their fundraising video, but as well as we filmed and interviewed them for not only this channel, but my hopes and dreams are to eventually have like a documentary or series on all this ish that we don't know. And I feel like, yes, we become mothers and we get used to it and we forget about it. We're like, yeah, it's easy. Blah, blah. I am deliberately choosing not to forget this because I don't want this for Saga if she chooses to become a mother. I don't want this for you if you choose to become a mother. I don't want this society to remain the same. So I wanna be part of the change. So I want to help empower women who may or may not want to be mothers. And if you are becoming a mother, do yourself a favor and get as much knowledge as you can. But I really feel that we are learning, I don't wanna to say too late, but why do we have to learn when we're pregnant? Why do we have to go out on our own to seek this information? I believe we should live in a society that this is part of the infrastructure, how to give birth, how to feed, how to just basic life tools that I feel we have been living a very comfortable life. Comfortable is nice, it's cute, but I think it's very important to know how to live without comfort, just to know. And in fact, I think that is one of the biggest blessings I can give my daughter, to be quite honest. There is this notion that it's about building generational wealth. You know, we gotta do better, we gotta give more. We gotta be strong. Not me. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> I'm so done with that rhetoric. Like, I don't have to do ish. What I have to do is 
be gentle to me. And because I can speak from perspective and experience, and yes, being comfortable is nice, um, but I would hope that I can give my daughter what my mother gave me. My mother gave me character. She gave me strength. It's not all about numbers. It's about energy. And it starts there. Anyways, I think I might be going on a little bit of a tangent. I say all that to say I've taken all this time out because I didn't want to be in a world that is driven by numbers. I wanted to be in the world of, I guess on the countryside really, and motherhood really. And now that I've been there, I, I have learned a lot and I would like to share that with you. I would also like to learn from you. So please let me know in the comments, like if you have questions, if you have struggles, um, please share them with me. So yes, that is the new chapter. At 30, I started YouTube and now at 40, I'm starting this journey of motherhood wisdom, woman support, knowledge seeker. Like I know a lot, but I don't know that much in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> like I've learned a lot. <laughs> so that's this new chapter. You're gonna see more videos of like me being a mom. Like that's basically what I've been posting um, as well as life at 40. Like it's so interesting the misconceptions and like things that people say at 30 like Girl, have several seats. Even me, let, let's just do the math. I'm 40, I'm not old. Said who? Say you? Say you who, based on my genetics, based on my family, so my great granny who I, I love dearly, who has passed away, but she lived to be 100. So say I live to a minimum of 100, because I feel like I'm gonna live longer than 100, but 100. 50 is the halfway mark, okay? 50 is halfway, 40 is not even halfway. I can start saying I'm old when I'm 90. Maya, you old. <laughs> you're 90% done. <laughs> you're 40, you're, please have several seats. 50, you're not old. Several seats, sit down. 60, I see where you got that idea. Have several seats, sit your ass down. Come talk to us when you're 80. Or depending on your own, like, you know, if you think you're gonna live to 70, then maybe you're old at 60. Okay, fine, fine, 60, you old. 60 me, I ain't old. You and me, we're cut from two different cloths, okay, child? So, yeah. She a doula, she a postpartum doula, she is a wisdom seeker and keeper, <laughs> and life is gonna get very interesting. Please check in my info box below for like more info and like how to book a time with me. And um, let's just keep this ball going. I wanna have this conversation open. I wanna be fluid with this because I know I have a lot to learn from you and I have a lot to share here. Until next time, boo, remember to do you, be you and stay true. Be shameless. <laughs>